get out of here. So I've got one of these, just some um, farm. The guy I didn't want it, so since I was going to use it for a 12 volt setup, because I initially thought, yeah, maybe I could find a way to. I thought that was just 12 volt or 24 volt zone or uh, contacts that contact is instead of switching to 40, I switched 12 with them. But you know, I was only using the this pump on his tractor, a little electric pump, 12 volt. But turns out it's all 240 volt contactors and everything. So I'm going to use this, hook it up to this 15 amp cord, very heavy duty plug. 10 amp, I'm not going to be putting anything more than 10 amp for it. Just make a cool panel thing out of it, so something test something, something goes bad, or something goes wrong, bang, hit that emergency stop. I might have a hook my ballast up with it, just so I can kill things and have an emergency stop here handy, so I'll just go bang, cut, cut power all together, so make a nice test panel switch set up, so try and hop, hook this thing up. I'll open it up and show you what it looks like inside. It's made by Morello in Germany, so. Let's open it up. Okay, viewers, this is obviously a three phase switch setup. Starts here, and it draws the contactor when you press that button. So that goes there, presses against there, and it draws that contactor on the stop button. Has a tab which hits that, pops it all together. So we've got live one, live two, and live three. There's little jumpers here joining from this to this contact, or this. Relay, as you say. Oh, is it? yeah. Contactor. And yeah, that's it. It tells us how to hook it up here too, I think. But yeah. Suitable for 5 kV RMS, max at 600 volts AC. Use fuses above 480 volts AC, circuit breaker 15 amps. So what I'm going to be doing, it's like that, where the neutral goes, we've got live 1, live 2 and live 3, neutral seems to be up here, that black one, so if I put from that cord, neutral here, active through there, and below, just active goes, if I get active from below, and neutral there, and that's it, and earth obviously goes here, so yeah, I just have to hook this up accordingly, so we've got neutral coming off here, to the yeah, that seems pretty, yeah. Because I only have to use one of these with single phase. Any one of these will do. I'll just choose a um, live. Eh, any one of those I'll choose. Which is easy just to hook up. They're all the same, really. So, yeah, let's get going. I didn't pay attention here, but yeah, it basically tells you where everything goes. Earth, yeah, it's got the symbol there. Neutral, it's got it there. So, that's it. I'll try, yeah. I was spending looking before looking where the hell the pictures on the package were, see if it had the pictures on the um, on the housing, and it actually did. So looks much better now. So this will work with, with, with um, single phase 240 volt. It's going to say three phase, but I'm not going to be using it for three phase. So I have that. So I can plug into an ordinary wall outlet, have a kill switch set up, and I put some other. I haven't got any sockets of them, so I'm just going to have to connect the ladder to it and see what we can get. I might make some sort of setup where I have that ballast. Instead of having a plug on the end of it, I just hook it up for this and screw it onto a little test panel. So that would be the main input. The ballast will come off there, here, and the power pump will still be there as is. Just leave that on, and the air for isolated there, and the ballast will be here. So I put like a big panel, like I screw this on too. But instead of having that little that little cord there that's short and I have to use a power point to switch on all the time I just use this so if something goes bad bang cut power and that's probably a better way to do it so that might be a better idea so let's get wiring these are a bit too long I don't need them that long I have to cut these shorter let's see how it works here okay viewers that's how it all hooks up neutral earth single phase active 240 volt into one of the live so load will connect here. T1, T2 and T3. So this is my live one to be load. Now I don't need these two so I'll tighten these up. Don't want those to be loose and falling out on me. Don't do this too tight either. Always go by the specs because they can break like crap if you do them too tight. But yeah, I make, I've got another quarter hook up on the output. 
See if I've got another one of those little cable lockers on here. Come out here. Ballast box here. Screw it to a board. I'm still thinking about it though. I'll see how this works out first. Then we'll go from there. Push that in. And tighten the hell out of that. Bloody cut myself too. Bloody wires and your shipping wires and stuff. I was also pressing against this edge though as I was doing it. Too. So yeah. Didn't realise that edge was damn sharp. So... So that's to sit in there to seal. But here's a better piece of closure and here's a little wiring diagram. I just realised that now. Yeah, that should work out. We'll put active 3L1 and it should still switch the same. Because I'm only, I'm only going to use one phase, single phase, so any one of the phases should work. So I choose to use L1. Be the easiest. Push those wires down there neatly. Push that in. That should be far enough and tighten that up. And we go from there, see if we can hook a load in this thing or just test the multimeter first. Hook the multimeter up here, live, or under the neutral, and we'll see if it switches. Okay, viewers, here's what I really like about the clips or stuff. The exact guide, how it should be. That's how all plugs should have it. A little instruction on the back tells you exactly how to do it, how long you need it, so it's what the cause that hang out. Have a look at that. And this is for 1.5 millimeter squared cable, so this is pretty big stuff, this one. Looks, this is actually off a 10 amp, 1980s era Makita chop saw, metal steel chop saw, which died about 10 years ago. It was a damn good saw, the fan came off, so we rotted it back onto the um, rotor. It worked fine for another couple of years after that, for ages and ages and ages, and the fan finally snapped off and jammed and locked up and bent the motor out. Damn shame, it was a damn good chop saw. But for a 10 amp chop saw to have a 15 amp coordinate, that's pretty unusual. So yeah, let's put these on, wire it up and let's give it a test. Okay, reels are ready to go. Plugs are wired up. Here's an extra heavy duty series. It's a 15 amp um, shroud and grip nut with a 10 amp heavy duty plastic plug top. Let's, let's plug this in. Yeah, I've got to be careful here not to touch anything when I plug it in. Oops, that cord fell. These bloody cam books have a safety thing in them, so you got to be careful how you plug stuff into these. The little doors are closed, so kids can't stick things in there. So you got to be very careful when you plug stuff into these. It should be off, so if I get my little multimeter here, active in there, active to that, to neutral. Let's turn it on. She's on. Yes, 238, 237 volts. Perfect, it works. And you can hear the hum in there, the contact shutting the coil, so that's beautiful. I got it worked right. So that's how you would wire it up. Life ones, your single phase 240 going into that one, and the rest is pretty straightforward. You can choose live one, live two, or live three, every one you reach, whichever you want for um, single phasing. But yeah. Let's put up some sort of load in this and see how it goes. Okay, viewers, well, I'm not going to worry about hooking up the ballast box to this thing. I'm going to leave that as a separate setup altogether. I'm just going to put this aside until I think of a good use for this thing because it does make a good emergency stop switch. Right, hmm, I think that's something I'll use it for, so either I'll just set up having that, I'll just hook it up with that. Emergency cut off switch when I'm ramping stuff so that gets too hot, bang, shut off, cut power altogether. That might be a better idea, but I'm still thinking about it yet. So it's a bit of trial and error going on here. Now, someone asked. Remember my previous videos I did what we use in Australia to join wires and electrical installations instead of using those wire nuts which aren't approved here, they're illegal so big thing little electrical fitting slash emblem collection here I've got some of those little cable joiners they're sitting in here so I'll show you what we use instead they're a similar sort of thing but instead of um Okay, they're not in there. I'll just look for them. But yeah, 
basically when you're working with, say this is your mains right here, when you're hooking stuff up, say, um, here you go, I'll demonstrate with these and I'll find a bit. You twist these together, say this is an active tube, so this is going for your supply, active going to join to that, and that goes to your load, like a power point or something in your house. Just ignore the colour for this demonstration, but either you twist those together, there's like a little thing with slide over the top, there's two screws in it, and you tighten those screws up and it clamps under that, and has a protective shrouding that goes down to about here. So about, so you can't, you've probably got about three or four millimetres of um, insulation tucked up on, into the connector. Then you fold those down and tape it up with duct tape, I mean electrical tape. I'll try and find them and demonstrate them for you. I'll show you what they look like when I find them. Okay, the so this is what we're using instead of wire nuts. It's just a little crimp connector. Bloody forget the name of these. When I remember, remember the name of these, I forget them. These two are made by HPM. This one's a clipsal. But your wire, depending on the gauge wire, so something like this, will fit in there like that. Depending on the gauge wire you use, there's bigger ones. With, uh, for, um, this is for, let's see, I might say somewhere, 2 times 6 millimeter squared wires to fit there. I think it's about this size. No, hang on, you can tell by the size of the ring. Basically, when you want to make a join, I did this demonstration without my tripod here, so first you can twist those together. So you've got your active coming from your, your mains flex. This one here, the red one's coming is your mains flex, and this active here is your load, like a heat pump or negative, or something being hardwired. So instead of using the wire nut to twist on top of that, you use this. And you have to strip that bit longer, fold it over, push that in, hold it hard up against the back, as long as the um, wire itself being gripped by this bolt here. You get it up tight. And yeah, and that's how you, um, you would wire it up here in Australia. Something like that. And then you just fold it over and just tape it up with some electrical tape. This is in, when you're doing, if it's in a weatherproof enclosure. So you just, top, just wrap it up with um, electrical tape and seal it. And that's how it would go on your wire box, depending on um, the application. So this is going to be... This is, this particular wire is probably for light duty, so you do that, and you've got plenty of insulation there, and that just bites up under there, under the wires, that bolt. So that's your active going to from your supply, and that's going to a load, so it's just such, a, such as a heat pump. Same with your neutral, you do that. That'll be your supply neutral, and this neutral here, you go into your heat pump, you do the same with that. Tie that up, and that's your active and neutral. Hard to do here, but so yeah, say these here. I'll just tie these ones together so you know. But basically, you have something like that coming out of your flex. I'll look something like that, and they'll go to your load. So that's how you would join your wires. So it's a flex here, there together from your mains, and this is your to your load. You band these up with tape separately. And you have your earth going here. Usually the earth has a, a set of two of these, so it's a bit longer. Mm. Uh, about something like that. And has two of these. So earth goes right in. It's, it's often bigger because it's not a lot more to earth, depending on what you're using it for. So, so yeah, you have something like that. And you'll tie these up with that um, electrical tape. Each individual one. Seal it. And you can just have them together in a junction box. Usually, um, it's usually indoors, like in a weatherproof sealed junction box, which I haven't got to show you. But it's, that's sort of plastic, heavy duty. It's often small and round. I haven't got one to show you, as I said, but it's probably about as round as that speaker wheel. They would fit inside that and be sealed with these little, um, with something like that, depending on what you're doing, or just go through a conduit like this to your junction through there. Your connection be made in there and that comes out to your load, so yeah. 
that's our equivalent to using a wire nut. Probably a better way to do it because it's a tighter mechanical connection. A lot more safer that way, but 